tuned in to Athletics Double LC yeah, 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 yeah. with Lamar, uh -huh. Lucius, uh -huh. Big League Chu, yeah. and my man Clyde. <laughs> you are about to be schooled in all things track and field. This is experience. Yes, sir. We are talking past, past present, present, future. future. Y'all listen up. Let's go. Let's have fun. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, guess what it is? It's week 52, that means it's our anniversary from one year ago, we started meeting on Zoom to record this show called Athletics LLC. So, crazy times, we made it, uh, who'd have thunk it? We're all alive, we're all here, we're still ticking. And for the special occasion, we have two other people joining us, they're to my bottom, I don't know where they are to everybody else, um, but we have two special guests. Um, if you don't know, I'm not quite sure what rock you're living under, so please come out and join the rest of humanity. But uh, this evening, we have Mr. Leroy Burrell. How are you doing tonight, sir? <laughs> and Mr. Carl Lewis, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. As always, I'll introduce uh, the other three tiles with us. Clyde, how are we? I'm good. Um, I'm going to ask you to show us your bow tie because it, it's not just a bow tie. Oh, you you, you want the bedazzled bling from show <laughs> two? Okay, I got it. Bing, 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 bing. Sir Lucius, how are you tonight, sir? I am absolutely wonderful as always. Excellent, excellent. Last but definitely not least, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Educated <laughs> Lamar, 365 days. Offense. How are you? What's good, people? One year. Cannot believe it. Cannot believe it. All right. Thanks for bringing us together. Yeah, cool. We appreciate you. Ha. Hey, thanks. Thanks. Thanks for joining me on this ridiculous ride. Uh, who knows where it's going to go, but it's been fun for it. We, we've had the most fun during a pandemic ever. Right. Right. Well, well, I'm wondering why did it take 365 days to call us? <laughs> so, well, that's an I'm easy like, one. No, I'm no, like, that, I was see, pretty no. bored like two weeks into this thing thinking that is a softball lob. And I, you know what? I'm going to embarrass you both. Listen, by week two, I knew what I wanted to do for a one year, and it was you two. So at the end of the day, what took so long was y'all are that famous, y'all are that special that. You had to be the one year. That's what took so long. Okay. Carl, so you want to take this or not? <laughs> Go ahead, Carl. So, so that's what you're going with. Okay, so hard. <laughs> I was thinking, man, your nose must stink. <laughs> nah, it's just true story. <laughs> okay. See, I, I'm, I'm going to try to help him. Um, I'm not going to buy this two weeks nonsense. But once we started having guests, he did say to me, I would love to have Carl and Leroy in the show, but I want to wait. If we make it a year, I want it to be Carl and Leroy. That might have been like 12 or 14 weeks in, not two. But. Okay. And, and I mean, I'll, I'll, add, I'll add to this. Now, he never said this, but this is just the way I, I feel it. Once the thing got rolling, it was going to be one of two things. Carl and Leroy for the one-year anniversary, or if the show was starting to bomb, Carl and Leroy to get the viewership back. Save us. For the, for the same or the other. Now we're going to be subbed in when needed. Okay. But the one-year anniversary I mean, is absolutely appropriate. I'll admit to that. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, I, I hope we we're worthy of an anniversary or save the ratings, whichever. whichever <laughs> we'll see how that worked out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I'm, I'm excited for the rest of the world to like kind of get to meet you too. Because look, I've known you both for a very long time and, and you're very funny and engaging and there's lots of wonderful things about you. But as Sir Lucius has found like from this show, there's a lot of people who have now been introduced to him who didn't know that he was funny and all these, all these things because they think you're unapproachable. So, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm excited for tonight for everybody else to get to actually like meet the real Leroy and Carl. Let's hope let's hope we don't lose our jobs as a result. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we all do that every week except for except for uh, Lamar down there. We, we, we work work, hard. I we work hard to make sure that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I have a question for the two of you to ponder for a second here. Um, which one is harder? being a great athlete or coaching great athletes? He goes first. 
Um, well, you know, I think, uh, man, God, that's a really tough one. I think, you know, obviously being a, being a great athlete is, is a challenge because you've you got to deal with, uh, you know, your competitors. But I think if you're, you've been at it long enough, you kind of know what you're going to need to do to be successful. Coaching a lot of athletes, several athletes, that can change from minute to minute. Uh, sometimes you think you got it, then th then something crazy happens. Or one, uh, well, first of all, we're dealing with a whole bunch of crazy people right now. Ooh. Anyway, you know, <laughs> between the pandemic, social media, all of these other weird things going on with the generation of athletes that we that we're we're, we're currently working with, and um, you know, so that makes that much more of a challenge and it literally the wind can change directions and and then you somebody will get in a bad mood and completely blow the day for everybody and and a lot of kids aren't aren't afraid to to throw gasoline in the room and light a fire and then say okay I'm gone you know so yeah. that's uh that's the the world we live in and then so so I think as a coach you you end up uh, if you can't manage that situation on a day-to-day -day basis you end up you know spending wasting a lot of time and not really getting after things you need to get done yeah, it's 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 interesting because, you know, once once I got it going athletically, it's a challenge. But um, just like Leroy said, you do have a system and an idea of what to do. I I look at it because you're you're there's a lot less control. I mean, track meets watching relays is just I mean you, your your heart stops for a minute <laughs> and do anything. So that's the kind of stuff that gets me. And and it, plus the stakes are higher. Um, mm -hmm. you're, you're really taking on in a lot of ways. You're taking you know, 17, 18, 19 year olds and continuing their growth as a young person. And so uh, the stakes are a little bit higher. One little mistake and you can go this way or they can go that way. So I, I, for me, it's, it's, it's a lot more challenging, more difficult, but more challenging because the stakes are a lot higher and you have so much less control on game day. That's the thing. It's like, did we do everything? And if you, uh, and then when it goes, get the baton around and oh my goodness, I can't believe it starts that. So it, it's a lot more, it's a lot more challenging to me that way. You know, it's funny you should mention that, you know, you mentioned the game day thing, because that's kind of the easy, to me, once you get to the day, day of, you're like, okay, I, I can hang, I can hang with this. It's all of the other stuff, you know, um, as a, as a collegiate coach, you know, it's the, the it's the never knowing when your phone is going to ring. Yes. <laughs> Just, yes. Especially now. Never knowing when your phone, and who's going to be calling. And who's going to be calling, for sure. As you know that, oof, Lord have mercy. <laughs> you guys, would you guys say that? Would you guys say that the emotions of coaching are harder or more on the spectrum, like higher and lower than they were for you as athletes? I mean, I don't know. No, I wouldn't say that. Not for me, um, because I mean, you, you, most of the time, you you have an idea what the, what your kid's going to do. Every once in a while, they'll either let you down or they'll surprise you. Know, so you kind of. I kind of you got that 30 30 30 rule some people are going to do what they always do some people are going to get worse some people are going to get better and as a coach you can kind of figure out yeah he's one of those maybe going to go worse kind of guys and he or she's one of those maybe going to get better kind of guys um so you can kind of kind of factor that in sometimes i think um you know, and i wouldn't say that we've always we've been in the middle of a of a really important or stressful situation uh too often but you, you kind of learn to live by that. And then a lot of times, as far as the competition is concerned, I'm sure, sure you guys can all attest to this. Now you have a good idea whether kids going to get, be their absolute best um, from, from their practice. You know, if they, they've got that ability and practice to really lock in and, 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 and give you that, that max effort or near, near max effort. And then they're just the kind of kid who can take their game up. You, you have a, pretty good idea that of that's going to come so that doesn't stress me out too much except when uh like a mere latin takes six strides to the hurdle <laughs> to the first round of the ncaa <laughs> or, or something. Hey, i remember i called you when i said did you see that he goes when i said a mere took six steps he's like what i was like yeah mm -hmm. he took six yeah. steps <laughs> But, uh, you know, I was on the other end of the stadium, so I couldn't see that. I just knew something yeah. went wrong, you know. Yeah. And I was just thinking, well, there's 10 more points, you know, or whatever it was. It was well, there's, oh, boy, there's five points. Jeez, how are we going to figure out figure that out, you know? But, yeah, uh, yeah you, you kind of know. 
We kind of know. Got it. Well, I, I lost my light there for a minute. <laughs> Ooh, again. Oh. I'm losing. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. Well, I think I'll figure it out. Well, I think that, that for me, it's like, the, it's the letter P, uh, potential performance. And what, what I see that the big difference is that we, with the world of social media and um, uh, people being able to write their own story in a lot of ways, um, the world is based on potential. You know, what, what we try to do is, is focus on excellence, what I try to do and, and translate that to them. It's not just about winning the competition, it's being the absolute best you can be. And in many cases you'll win uh, because that's what you can control. So that's the challenging thing to convince them that it's not just about, oh, I won the race, I won the prize. It's, it's are you getting better? Are you the best you can be today? Um, are you advancing what you're trying to do? And, and that's really the challenge for me, uh, just getting, convincing them to do that. Got it. So let, let's I'm play a what if one. game. What if game. If you could add or subtract a rule to improve track and field at any level, what would that rule be? Carl, you want to go first on that one? Uh, not really, but I will. <laughs> if I could change the rule, you mean at the sport at, uh, at every level? Any mm -hmm. level. At, at any level. At, at any level. Well, I think uh, that's, that's, that's tough. I, one, of the, one thing is um, a rule. Wow. Uh, I, I don't, geez, that's really, well, I see one of the, okay, I guess I'd look at this way. One of the things I don't like the re, I don't like the relay zone. Um, I wish they'd discussed that with us. Um, I think we tried to solve a problem that really didn't exist. And if it would have been me, I would have said, why don't we just give them more tape so they could see better. People are running 26 miles an hour and you can't see it's, it's, that's what the problem is. You can't see a person coming through. So I guess that's one rule I would change back. Um, is I would just say you can use as much tape as you want, like we do in college, and and um, put the zone back because what we're going to ultimately see is slower times, more injuries, uh, people running into each other, and and that's the thing. That's the one thing I can say right off the bat that that I would try to change. Back. Back. And another thing I'm going to change back. I'm going to I'm going to dance and get a light because I, I you know I'm not the lightest person on earth, so <laughs> I want to make sure you can see. I'll be back in ten seconds. Leroy, answer your question. Okay. Um, I well, you know, me, I, I I try not to dabble in the IAAF stuff because uh, who knows why they do the stuff that they do sometimes. But I, I think in collegiate track and field, and it kind of goes back to relays. I, I think that if I think you should be able to multi qualify multiple relays for the NCAA championship. You know, if you if you got eight guys and you can put two teams on the track, why shouldn't you be able to? You know, I, you can put. 10, 10 K runners on the track, you know, you can put uh, eight jumpers or five jumpers or how many you can qualify. If you, if you got guys who are able to, to get a baton around the track um, or, or four laps around the track as a unit, as a separate unit, I think they should be able to go. You know, I, I, I think, you know, to me, that's just a, a limiting factor that I don't think should be there. If you ask me. So. I've literally yeah, never heard anybody suggest that, but I think I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. I, it um, I, def I definitely have, I've, I've heard Curtis say that before, and I, yeah, thought, yeah, it, Curtis I thought it was a good idea. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, you know what, let's, like open, let's, open, let's open that question up to the rest of you, because I think mm -hmm. I'm interested to hear what, what Sir Lucius and Clyde and, and Big League have, have, have in store for a rules change. Uh, I mean, I think for me, um, I, I'm with Carl on the whole relay zone thing. Um, I, I think that was, honestly, the USA goes to a meet, gets disqualified for not getting into the zone. And then, you know, months later, we have a rule change and we shouldn't change the rule because the That's USA was, wasn't inept in doing their job. Yeah. You know, it's just that simple. So I don't think you change the rule. You tell the person to do their job better. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that's, and, and, the, and the other rule that I think needs to be really looked into you fall start in the hundreds, you get disqualified. You fall start in the 1500, they bring you back and they reset you. Yeah. So if you're gonna throw the 100 meter guy out, throw the 1500 meter guy as well. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I think, awesome. you know, quite honestly, I, I think uh, at least at the collegiate level, I think a lot of the rules are designed to keep, you know, certain people in check and certain, you know, kind of allow certain people to kind of get away with things, you know? Oh, the other rule that I would change is there needs to be a wind gauge in the pole vault. 
Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> that's the other, that's the other. I, and and I've never pulled in a day in my life, but I know one thing. If the wind is blowing behind my back, I run faster. Yeah, <laughs> <yes>. And they <laughs> jump higher. And they jump higher. And they are always looking for the place where they know the wind is going to be behind their back and they should have to put up a wind gauge as and take wind data marks as a result. But what are you guys' thoughts on as far as altitude, as far as, you know, NCA conversions and the jumps? You know, we get penalized yeah. in the sprint. Why don't we get penalized in the jumps? Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad you brought that up because, you know, there are things that I have to wait. Okay, now that you said it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I'm poking at you tonight, Carl. I no, know, I, you know, I, don't. I don't, I don't, you know, what's, what's amazing, I guess, to ask that question is the, the one performance in the history of our world that everyone identifies with altitude is an event they ignore with altitude, <laughs> the long term. Mm, right. I mean, right. Bob Beeman, right. we wouldn't know about altitude if it wasn't for Bob Beeman. So I, I totally get it. And especially at an NCAA level, it does create an advantage, a huge advantage. And mm. You know, sometimes we see it at the at the level. You, uh, they, they convert. They can convert every event, and whether we know exactly to the right, we're not certain. But all we know is that there is a conversion, and I think that uh, we just ignore that in all of the field events. You know, mm. really all the field events, and mm. and it, it's it's something I totally agree with you on that. That should be brought up, and because I I watched it, and I said, wait a minute here, come on, these people are jumping. It's an altitude that makes a big difference, mm. and then no one says anything. So I totally agree with you on that. And Carl, we were just talking about this uh, in, in Fayetteville a couple of weeks ago because you know, we were just driving along <clears throat> and uh, talking about altitude. And, I don't know. We were just talking about something. And I said, I said, well, Carl, well, you know, Fayetteville is Fayetteville's like uh, 1,200, am I right? About 1,200? Uh, yeah. It's like 14. Because 14. I, was, I, said, yeah, right. cause I, cause I told you, I said, you know, it's, real, it's not altitude, but it's high. It's, you know? it's real it's close. High. <laughs> it's real close. It's real right. close. <laughs> You see, yeah, I was Bo like Boise, Boise is like that too. Bo mm -hmm. Boise's just under the altitude adjustment as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so we, and we were like, okay, well, no one in car like, damn, no wonder. Oh, yeah, when the track's fast, you know, no doubt about it. And of course, the SEC competes there a lot, but it's real close. No, it, yeah, yeah. It's only a few feet. Did you just, did you just throw a stone at us in the SEC there? No, <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Well, hey, okay, hey, you, you okay, got to well, live with you got to live with the world. You got to live the world you live in. You know, and that's I mean, true. That's we, true. we, we. I mean, and you, you live at at sea level. We live at sea sea level. Mm -hmm. But but you know, you're very fortunate to get to compete up there quite a bit. And so you know, that's we great. have to we, we have to be invited. Trust me, my stones have not been at the SEC. They've been at the AAC. AAC okay, so yeah. <laughs> right. So well, Le I, Leroy's Leroy's stone or not brings me to my rule change. First, I agree the four by one zone shouldn't have been changed. It's lazy. I'm never in, I'm never in favor of a rule change that makes executing an event easier in theory if anything we should be changing it to make things harder to do well and therefore identify the people that can really do things well however for the exact reason that Leroy just pointed out outdoor is better because the kids have to race each other to qualify and therefore indoors because the indoor situation is so about resources and favor and which tracks you have access to you should have to qualify by racing people head to head to make it to indoor nationals as well. Um, you know, that's that's an interesting um, concept. To, the problem obviously is the scheduling. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's such a tight thing. I'm, I'm always against competing and racing. So how, how would you propose just move the season later or would you move the conferences back? That, that and, where, and where are you gonna do all this qualifying at? Yeah, that's 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 tough. Hey, if you, um, if you can set up, I mean, COVID aside, if you can set up you know, a regional qualifying system for outdoors, mm -hmm. you can do it. Not the same. Well. You know, it's not the same. I, you brother, know, it's I, not I, the same. I can see, time, you, you, see, 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 I'm going to talk to you like the old guy that I am. See, I'm going to tell you like I tell my younger siblings, like I tell my children, if you come up with an idea and a problem, then come to me with the solution. And the solution uh -huh. is, if, hold on a second now, I'll let you say what you had to say. Your thing is, if they can for outdoors, there's a million facilities outdoors. There's not, there's not facilities that are comparable indoors. It's just not. Yeah. Because yeah. trust me, if there was a way to get it done, because it'll increase their participation numbers, the NCAA would have done it by now. 
Trust me, they would have. Well, if the issue is time, it, it seems pretty simple. You move the conference championships up a week or two, therefore freeing up the week or two, you know, in between, and you move the NCAAs forward by one week. Now you have the time gap to do it. It could be the it could be something similar to the original system, you know, which was four regions. You identify the four best tracks indoor in the country, and you don't need to necessarily divide up the the schools by region. Like you could just identify like the like the suit like the uh, basketball tournament does. You could say, hey, this year, these conferences or these places, this is where you're going to do your your competition, and this is where y'all going to do yours, and it can rotate. You go to Arkansas, you go to A and M, you go to uh, uh, Clemson and and pick one, you know, one of the other. Like, you know, well, what I mean? well, there's certainly I, there's I, certainly I, more I, places I, to I, do I, it I, now than there have I, been in the past. Yeah, um, you know, but you know, and, and of course, the the challenge will always be, you know, you know resources. Who because it's still going to come down to resources. Because then you got to. It's going to come down to resources. It's going to come down to fair yeah. play. Mm -hmm. Okay, because so the problem, the the first problem you have with what you just said was. You go to Arkansas, you're inside warming up. You go to AM, you're inside warming up. You go to Clemson, all of a sudden it's 40 degrees and you're outside. No, I, I right. get it. I'm just talking about comparable tracks, but I understand. Mm -hmm. And of course, the resources issue that gets into a whole nother level. The well, NCAA should be paying for all this. Yeah. But that's a whole nother yeah. conversation. Well, <laughs> I, I think we, we got we we definitely if if we're if it, if that's the direction we're going that that enough people feel we need to move towards. You know, we've got the new uh, facility in um, uh, Virginia, at, at Virginia, Ocean Breezes. No, mm -hmm. not Ocean Breeze, that's the one in New York, uh, Virginia Beach. Virginia and Beach. then the, the one in Louisville uh, mm -hmm. is, in, you know, it just opened up. Then there's one in Chicago that just opened up. There's another one in Boston uh, that just opened up. You know, so there are more opportunities out there. You know, it's kind of funny, all these all these little smaller cities which said, man, Birmingham's racking up a lot of money hosting these meetings. We need right. to do it too. Yeah. And so now they're doing it. They're doing it as well. Um, you know, so there, there are more places to go, but obviously there are there are reputations with other other tracks and and some of them are rightly so, you know, that you get a lot of unbelievable performances at, at Arkansas. You know, but I've always been a, 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 a athlete's drive performance. You get the best athletes on the on the track, and they'll they'll get it done. You know, uh, but we'll see we'll see what happens. To, you know, with some of these places that they're they've opened because uh, some of them look quite impressive. Yeah, well, I think, you know, one, I think it was Carl Lewis that said, "Fast men make fast tracks." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing one thing you could do though is I, I think you can you can also flip it. I mean, they could easily add eight more. And just do three heats instead of two and so now you're adding 50 percent more yeah. people secondly we should also look at how do we market because what other other than football that we know only like 20 teams can make it um what other sport has a more challenging opportunity to make it to their national championship so we should be marketing that mm -hmm. um the, the, the toughest championship in the ncaa and we could easily go to 24. actually you, you can make an art that's a big, big difference and then you're not changing the meat, you're not changing the time, and then market the fact that uh, when you, it's really, really hard, and you're right, it's just difficult and challenging to get to those events. But, but you know, in order to build our sport, we're gonna have to uh, try to create as much opportunity, but also focus on the people that uh, are gonna get the job done. And, you know, when you get outside of 24, 25, 30, you're, you're really, the chances go way, way down. And are we just trying to create uh, a fix something that's just for people that are not going to make a difference at the end anyway. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the way I see it. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you know, I agree. I, maybe that's the rule that we, we, we ought to really look at is why, why are we so limit? Why do we limit the number at the indoor meet to 16? You know, yeah. it's arguably one of the hardest meets to get into. You know, oh, period. it's the hardest. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the hardest. Yeah. Qualifying so for, I, for yeah, nationals. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I was, I, I'm talking in, in the world, you know, because. It, I, yes. And so. Yeah. Um, in the world, you know, we've uh, and and then Carl, you mentioned marketing, but they don't market to me, period, at all, <laughs> at all. They just say, hey, we're having to meet, uh, and we're going to, you know, Birmingham, we're going to Fayetteville, we're going to uh, College Station. First of all, why the hell are we going to College Station? <laughs> but <laughs> but, but uh, you know, the, and, and so you, you're going to get uh, some great uh, great crowds up. But you're not. I remember we were in Birmingham a couple of years ago, and uh, I think there was a AU basketball tournament or something. There was something going on um, in in 
in uh, Birmingham and 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 I complained. I think I tweeted something about, you know, how come the local news isn't covering this? There was nothing on nothing, you know. And then I got you know people from Birmingham blasting me. Well, you're, we're hosting a meet. Well, I was like, oh my god. But you know, there's no marketing, none whatsoever. And to me, that's just a sad state of affairs as far as the NCAA is concerned. They they just don't, you know, they give this event to people, and the, and their idea is okay. We'll host this event because we're gonna we're gonna fill up our hotel space in February when nobody's coming to Birmingham. Not that we're going to host this great event and we're going to showcase these athletes and showcase these teams. And I think that's sad that that's what's allowed to happen to our sport at the NCAA level. Actually, the, the same thing happens outdoors as well because they all, people think the only place you can have a great meet is in Oregon. Uh, that's not true. It's just not it, true. It may not be true, but to this point, to this point in history, it's the only place it's been done well. They show Boise? up. It, One I'll, of the best first, NCAA meets I've ever been to was in Boise. Absolutely. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But was it a sellout and, standing room only crowd? Uh, that stadium was pretty damn full, if I remember correctly. And it and, was. And see, I, and I want to see how standing room only Oregon is going to be now. Well, you, yeah. well, well I, I don't know if you guys remember the, the oh. first the first <laughs> two times we went to Sacramento. Yes. They, they were full. The first mm -hmm. two times we went to Sacramento, they were full. That's true. So That's it, true. it's definitely doable. And and I and I'll go look. I, I I will go to my grave saying that Sacramento was definitely the best place to have it because it was the only place we've ever been where the sprinters and the distance runners didn't complain. Okay. <laughs> there there was no complaints about weather. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold. It wasn't. They didn't have too much uh, pollen. Like there was no drama. <laughs> mm. Right. I, I will say this. I want to jump in here, and, and I'm, a, I'm probably going to piss off the whole distance world. I don't really care. Um, the rule I have always had an issue with is how come the top eight sprinters or quarter milers or whatever make the final, but there's always 12, wow. half mi 12 milers. Milers, yeah. Like, hmm. That has driven me crazy since the first time. Time I ever saw it. Yeah, like I said, I like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, like I meant, like I said, you know, it limits up a lot of the rules limit opportunities for some and don't for others. You know, I mean, there most tra most tracks we go to have uh, nine. Most many of them have nine lanes. You know, but they rarely fill that ninth lane. But they'll go to twelve in the in the uh, fifteen or yeah. twelve in the five k or whatever the case may be. Yo, know, you got to beat somebody. Yeah, that's what the that's the the log the logic behind. You got to beat somebody. Look, if, if I if I if I could change the rule, I'd make it like this. Look, I understand mm -hmm. we have limitations by ways to track. Every track event fills the lanes and no more, and every field event fills the lanes plus one. Mm -hmm. So if we got nine lanes, you take ten people to the final of any field event. And why story. is that? Because that because now you're giving now you're doing something for the field event, you're not doing for the. And it doesn't have to be like they they've always done that. So no, like so I'm good think, with nine, but, I, but I'm just saying okay, I'm good they, with they, nine. So, but the argument from the distance crowd is going to be what they've always done that too. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Hey, look, I, I will accept that addendum and leave it at nine. I am good. There you go. <laughs> let's make let's make it across the board right for everybody. Right. That's all I'm Absolutely. Because uh -huh. I've never understood like how is it you can only you can be in the top 12 to qualify for the mile, but you had to be the top eight all the way down to the thousandth to make it back in the in in the hundred and the hundred or the sixty. And the crazy part is when there are ties to the thousandth. They make them race off for that spot in the final. Like I've seen that at two different conference meets. And I'm like, we can't just run two finals and run a five and a four. Cause that's what they would do in the mile. They would just take another person in the track. They would do all the time. Well, I agree. What you got big league? I agree. Wait, as for my rule change? Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Um, well, mine was funny, and I hope my boss doesn't get mad at me for this one. <laughs> I don't think he watches. Um, I don't understand. So this is in cross, not in track, but it tests, it's a testament to what we we're saying about the distance athletes in track, that why do they all get to go to regionals? Like, conference oh, yeah. is not very Regionals is wide open. Like, yeah. wide right? like, open. <laughs> so I don't get it. Like, why do we can, like, conference championships well, should dictate who goes right i don't so, know and insert leroy burrell saying it is set up for some leroy right <laughs> i'm just saying right? 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so well, let's you know, and, and, and actually I I'll, I'll I'll piggyback on it just a little bit. I don't understand, and this you know, maybe I'm an old school track guy. I don't understand why we have two 10K championships in, in the sport of running. You know, why do we do a 10K championship in cross country and a 10K championship on the track? You know, they should run something different. You know, I, I actually believe indoor track should be something different as well. You know, so I think we should do the old school indoor. We run the 300, we run the 60, we run the 300, we run the, the 500, we run the, the thousand or something. You know, I just think it should be a little different. You know, why should we do the same thing over and over and over again? And I know that'll ruffle some feathers too. So. Yeah, but, but you know I, what though? If, mm -hmm. if somebody had the balls to do it, it would be very, very interesting because you know what it would do? Yes. Make people coach. Mm -hmm. and that's what people don't want to do. Yeah. Well, well, if you look at it, if you, let's say if you went to 60, because, you know, it, it, when I was in the dark ages, it was a 60, 600. Remember back in those days, there was no three or 400. That was it on those little tracks. So if you have a 600, you're creating a new dynamic. What eight, got, what eight person comes down, what four guy goes up. So now you're creating different. And at 300, four guys go down, 60 go up. So you're creating different matches. I mean, I think that would be an interesting dynamic. And even even the thousand, the eight up, and so so I think that's the best part about it. You're just creating another sport because right now it's just kind of generic. You automatically end up comparing the times inside to outside, and it just doesn't. You're, there are new new matches, no different things. And then with the schedule the way it is, I think it would be even more interesting, and it would create people that make it now would not make it then, and mm -hmm. people that don't make it would. And so, mm -hmm. it, it, um, and if you can't make it in the sixty or the three hundred as a quarter mile, you may move up. And say, well, I can't. I know I'm not fast. Enough. I'm going to move up and try to race the 800 meter guys. I think I can make it to six. So I think that's a that's a great idea to change all of, all of the events all the way up and to have people run something different and just create new times and new records. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, there's two tiles that are occupied here who have pretty he heavy words that can be landed. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm just saying. Yeah, Leroy's like. Um... <laughs> Um, oh, no. Do you mean me? Wait a minute. El well, you know, well, listen, hold, hold on. All right. My job as, as a t I figured my job would be a lot like my predators, my, my predator, my predecessors, which was, which was <laughs> let's eat and let's have a drink. God, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to start with welcome. Let's eat, let's eat have a drink. <laughs> let's have a drink. <laughs> okay. Now, now it just so happens that we had this little thing called like a pandemic. Then <laughs> it became, damn, you better save the sport. I was like, hold on. Whoa. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm too busy trying to save my uh, job. <laughs> well, well, before we move on to the next question, okay. let's, let, I think I think we would all agree that however it happened, they got the right person in the seat for the job. So I mean, um, amen great. to that. You've done a brilliant mm -hmm. job. Uh, I, well, I wouldn't say that. I just kind of hold on. Be That's honest right. Everybody you. else says it's good. Oh, thank you. You just keep it. holding on then. <laughs> okay. So let, let's give you a little bit of a flashback and have you think about this. <laughs> I saw that face. Um, what were practice sessions like between you guys in the Santa Monica days? Oh my goodness gracious! I guess um, age before beauty, right, Leroy? <laughs> um, you, you know what was interesting about that? When, when I joined Santa Monica in 1980, um, and believe it or not, the day I joined, Todd Harvard, coach at Baylor, and Johnny Gray joined the same day. So um, I, it was a distance club, and I was the only sprinter. And so my objective was I have to find some sprinters to go with. And so by the time we did. It was, uh, you know, we had, of course, Leroy and Floyd Hurd and Mike Marsh and, and all these guys, you know, Mark Witherspoon and, and all these guys. And for us, it was it was um, another competition in a friendly way because we were all so close. I, I, I know good well being the oldest by like five years um, that it was for me, it was like it was, I wouldn't say survival, but it was like if I can't do it in practice, it's over. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality of it from my perspective. And um, it was very, very competitive. Certain people trained better in practice. Mike, I thought, was the best trainer. I know Leroy would agree with that. He, had, he, he trained the best. Um, and so we kind of followed him in a lot of the breakdowns and things like that. And then, of course, they jumped. Oh, they did their spring, and then I had to run over and do the jumping. So I, 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 I love to train. 
I, I love that training. And I always tell the kids, um, honestly, no one ever remembers an easy workout. I'm just here to give you more stories. And so mm -hmm. um, I think that, that, that I love that part. Of it. I really enjoy training. I thought I enjoyed the hard part. I enjoyed the challenge and they were great to be with, with this group for almost 10 years together. It was just amazing for me. I, I, I I couldn't have imagined anything better, especially once everyone came together. Wait, before you answer, Leroy, before you answer, let, can, can we, how is Carl just going to gloss over the, well, you know, after doing all the sprinting stuff, I had to just run over and do some long term stuff. <laughs> Actually, what? that's how it was. <laughs> but okay, so so here's what I'm saying, right? I, because, I, because I know Carl, I know he really means that. But if I'm Larry Myricks, I'm like, wait, time out. This dude was beating me for a decade straight in his part-time job. Well, <laughs> well, that's not exactly the case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm okay. saying. No, he, no, it wasn't his part-time job because I had two full-time jobs. Yeah, two full-time jobs. Well, jobs. first of all, like first, first of all, Carl was a sprinter, jumper, not a jumper, sprinter. Okay, all right. So he sprinted and then he went to jump, and it wasn't like his part-time job. It was just that was the other his other assignment. You know, but you know, you have to admit, I mean, by the time I got there, you know, I mean, Carl was already, I mean, Carl jumped 28 feet when he wanted to, you know, and so I mean, that's wanted just, to. like yeah, literally when, when he wanted to. Yeah, well, so, I mean, I'm sorry, because some people just got it like that. <laughs> so, I, listen, so, I'm telling you right now, okay, now I guarantee but, you that Larry, Larry Myricks rolls over in the middle of the night with cold sweats with pictures of Carl Lewis. Nah, nah. Well, no. That was part of my job. You, you know, Larry I, just, actually, Carl, you know, Larry just moved to Houston. It's funny you say that, because I used to always say, I, I want to go to bed counting sheep. I want them to go to bed counting me. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I always jump far around. <laughs> well, I always jump far around. One, so Carl. Oh, two. this is being recorded, you know. <laughs> um, I get, do I get to answer the question as well? Yes, yeah, please. Okay, I'll put it this way. There are two people that you did not want. Well, first of all, you better you better work on your mindset on Sunday. All right, so Sunday, you know, around I don't know five o'clock, six o'clock. You better start thinking about Monday. All right, first, I mean, most kids don't think start thinking about training until they get there, but you better start thinking about it before. Then. And there are two people that you wanted to avoid if you were not if your mind was not right. All right, you wanted to avoid Mike Marsh at all costs. All right. Because Mike Marsh will run you into the ground, all right? <laughs> you wanted to avoid Mark Witherspoon because Mark Witherspoon will run you into the ground. You know? Now, I mean, anybody on the track could get you at any point, but there was just a mag there was a magnitude of who was very consistent. And Mike was very consistent. Yeah. And Mike could run anything, all right? Anything. And so could Mark. You know, he could run anything. All right. And so you had to just decide, okay, today I'm up to, you know, the Mike Marsh challenge or the Mark Witherspoon <laughs> challenge. And if it, if you weren't up to it, then you just said, let me just run in the second group. <laughs> Unless coach Teles told you otherwise, and then you better figure it out. Right. Right. <laughs> so that, 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 that's about the, the good summary of the situation there, Carl. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, break, break, break down Monday. And you know, what else was really interesting was I, I, most of that time, all five of us were in the top 10 in the world in the 100. And we did starts together every, every Tuesday and Thursday. So you have five of the top 10 sprinters in the world you know, um, that are doing starts together with a gun, because we always did them with a gun, every single Tuesday and Thursday. And so that was, that was the challenge. So once you go through this get ready for this breakdown Monday, which is every Monday, now all of a sudden tomorrow, okay, I'm getting ready to go race in the uh, national championship final in my start practice. <laughs> so that's kind of what it was. It was just, it was nonstop uh, challenge. And, and mentally it made you really tough because by the time you got to Friday, I mean, people, people, uh, you're like, okay, the meet's here. I mean, with the one or two people that are fast because I've already racing against everyone all week long. And that's, that's how it was every, every single week and every single day. I, everybody needed to hear that. <laughs> right. right. Well, there's some people who, def who definitely didn't want to avoid it at all costs. I mean, because there were a lot of other people, there were a lot of people who maybe considered to come train with us. And there were a lot of kids, you know, at, at, in, you know, college kids who you know, were kind of came to visiting, whatever, visits and stuff like that. And they were like, I want no parts of this, you know. 
Um, <laughs> count me out. Nice. And what, what if you, if you, I always felt like if you were, were okay with, with taking your, your, for lack of a better phrase, ass whoopings at our, at practice, then you were pretty good um, in Zurich or Lausanne or Paris or London or whatever. It didn't matter. You just take that show on the road and you were good, you know? So it, it, it I was fine, you know? Right. I, was fine. I loved it. I, uh, I always tell them, even now I tell them, look, you improve in practice and you show it in the league. So mm-hmm. if you don't want to work on improving in practice, then you're just not going to get better. And so that's how all of us took, took that. And we were fortunate to have people that were fast enough and strong enough so that even if you were not on that day, you could just grab one and hold and you still got better. Mm-hmm. That, that's the crazy part about it. I don't care who you were. You still got better. Got it. Um, I'm, I'm interested to hear if this, this answer varies between the two of you. Uh, what is the best Carl and Leroy's story that nobody knows about. I mean, maybe you can tell me, Leroy. <laughs> they kind of know everything, don't they? You take that first because I need to think about it. You know, I'm older in my brain than work as fast. I'm trying to think is if there's a if 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 I can actually tell this and it will pass the <laughs> censors. Well, um, we, we, we have a four-year-old fan. I'll, huh? I'll tell a good story. I'll tell a nice you one. You tell the story. Mm-hmm. There ain't no sense. So mm-hmm. I'll tell, you know, he can do that. I'll tell a good one. It's in honor of Final Four week. Um, we actually met when he came on a visit during the Final Four. Mm-hmm. So that's something that people, and that was, gosh, 36 years ago now, Leroy? Yeah. yeah. So wow. we, yep. we, had, uh, we met Final Four weekend yep. because we actually, actually, weekend. I watched I watched uh, Villanova uh, dismantle uh, Georgetown uh, at at in the Final Four at Carl's house in my recruiting visit. <laughs> now, well, actually, my, delete that. That might have been Don't a say, violation. That's <laughs> definitely a violation. Rules have changed. I mean, look here. You have the, the most violated person in NCAA history sitting here. So it's so over. Um, the rules have changed. Trust me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> So that's a, that's a story people didn't know. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say. Um, <laughs> a, a Carl, I don't know. I mean, a lot of it's been, um, you know, documented. Uh, I, I, okay, I'll tell it. I'll tell a story. Um, well, we um, we actually, I don't know why, but there were two times that we decided that we wanted to go camping. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> there were two times we decided we want to go camp. Well, actually, at the end of my freshman year, um, I tore my ACL at the Southwest Conference meet. And uh, and I had I basically stayed back on uh, all summer for well, we weren't really rehab. I just stayed there because I had surgery and and I didn't go home. And for some reason, I'm in a cast and we decided that we were gonna go to the beach. All right, we were gonna go to Galveston, all right. And uh, I think Carl, picked, you, you picked me up and Carol, and who was it? It was me, you, Carol, Vet Cash, oh, I think maybe. Yeah, I was Kim Carter with us? I think maybe Kim Carter. And we all just kind of loaded up in, um, you had like a Bronco, didn't you? Do you have a black yeah, Bronco it was a, or a Jeep? You know the Jeep one with the, with the, the uh, Wagoneer. I had a Wagoneer. Yeah, yeah right, okay. So, so we were headed to Galveston. And as we were headed to Galveston, we could see, well, first of all, there was a lot of people coming back. And we can see that there were, it was really dark and, and cloudy. So we decided to whip it around, turn back and head back uh, north to, to, uh, to Houston. And I guess in the, the drive back, we decided, well, we'll just go camping. <laughs> and, so, and, so, and so we, we, uh, we stopped by, we, I don't know, Carl, I guess you had tents and all, we, we got, grabbed a tent and we decided to drive north uh, to um, Cleveland Texas and pick a state campground and camp. Well, that storm kept traveling north too. <laughs> what were we thinking? <laughs> yeah. And so as we got there, we pitched a tent and then it started pouring. And I'm in the cast. I mean, it was terrible. It was miserable. It was bad. <laughs> I remember <laughs> really, that. And then and then the second time we decided <laughs> to go camping uh, over uh, spring break. Uh, I think this might have been my junior year. So me, Floyd, um, uh, who was it? Me, Floyd, 
Don Parrish, Sam Lowe, my roommates, and who else? I don't remember. We we uh, all decided to, to we all decided we we car, caravan to uh, like north a little north of Austin. So we went to pick yeah. the campground and went up there, and we we decided to hike back to the remote area. We went back there, but we didn't check the weather again, and the temperature dropped to about I don't know, maybe twenty degrees. It was freezing. <laughs> it was freezing. What? Um, and and so we and I think we only had one really good sleeping bag, if I remember correctly. And Floyd had it. I mean, Floyd. So Floyd <laughs> hey, but the rest of us almost died. You know? yeah. Well, actually, we almost died twice because we we decided to get these little canoes and we kind of canoed out in the lake. And then then the the, the front kind of came through as we were on the lake. Floyd's canoe capsized. You remember that, Carl? And, Absolutely. And, and, and Floyd's got on some some uh, Timberland boots or something like that. He almost <laughs> drowned. You know? So so we finally got Floyd back in the boat, and and then we just, it was just a mess. But anyway, we threw all of that crap in the back of the car and drove back to Houston. Anyway. I've never been. I haven't been camping since. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, uh, and that doesn't include all the European trips. We'll leave that alone. But yeah, yeah we, we, we have uh, we have some stories. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the yeah. Yep. Oh, so, so that that's those are those are two. The, I don't go camping anymore. Put it. To <laughs> <laughs> if you did, I would question your sanity. Leroy, you've been camping two more times than I ever have, bro. Yeah. Well, uh, they didn't work. The, the the two. Well, first of all, you know, you might want to check the weather report before you decide to go. Camping. <laughs> so, you know what? Eighties. 80s. Yeah. 80s. Mm -hmm. was, you actually have to have. You have to make an effort to check it. You check the newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> Go yeah. find the so meteorologist. Was, hey, Q, is that along the line of what you, what you, what a, a story you, you yes. uh, you'd expect? Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Believe me, we, we actually did a lot of really stupid stuff together. I mean, I, we, 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 <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've had our fair share of really interesting uh, gatherings. <laughs> you know? uh, actually, I could tell, I could tell, cause 30th birthday party. Ooh. Oh, Lord of mercy. That, well, that was fun. Want to tell that one? <laughs> um, uh, I, I'm not. <laughs> Lord. Yeah, we, we had Carl's 30th birthday party at my house. Um, that's all I'm going to say. I was going to say, how much are you going to roll? I see. <laughs> yeah. You might want to roll to the next question. Yeah, I'm going to say. I mean, I'll save you. I mean, it looked like a police uniform. I mean, it looked like a police uniform to me. <laughs> and see. Yeah. Oh my oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> All right. So so we'll we'll bring you back onto the level of, of our professionalism, kind of. Um, what do you guys feel is the biggest key to growing and securing the sport for the future? Our sport for the future. Well, I guess I'll jump in there. I think the biggest issue with our sport is the structure of it. You know, uh, the IAAF basically set up like a communist system. One vote, one country. Um, it's designed for uh, corruption because the country, the, the people in charge are put in a system where they're trying to make everyone else happy instead of creating a merit-based system from the countries to, to get more power to vote. So I think that's the first part. It's not going to happen unless we eliminate the federation system and just go to a professional system. So they can have that kind of like a board that sits outside, but but the reality is it's not going to change. Because I mean, this this is giving the, the um, pandemic is uh, enough. Just just look at that. So here we have vaccines in the world. Um, it looks like we're trying to come out of this and get it. Now, if we wanted to have the world championships or even, even the IOC and the Olympics, they're in a similar challenge. What, what, there are so many countries that may not have access to vaccines. They may not have money. They may have these things. Well, what the IOC said, I'm going to send vaccines to all these federations to give to all the athletes. There are so many countries where cousins and nephews and nieces would have vaccines and no athletes would have them. Um, and, and that's herein lies the problem that we have. Um, we, we, it's just simply not going to change unless we completely change the system at the top. And we need to get, um, basically set up a system of professionalism and do it. And that's it. And number two, I think the short sport needs to shrink. It's there are too many athletes and too many agents and too many people. If they went to 
a basketball summer system where they had um, an A system and then like their G League, a B system where there's merit to get into that, we could channel more of the funds to the professionals that deserve it. And then when you have your development money, you're not giving it to them. You're giving it to the second level because of the top ones are making money. Um, so I, I, I think that the problem is that we're just not going to change unless we change this, this system of one country, one vote. And that, that's just something we're going to have to fight around, but we're declining. I mean, just to give a real quick example, um, the IWF has run the world championship since 1983. Um, in 1997, I'm sorry, 19, yeah, 97, I'm sorry. They gave away $60,000 and a Mercedes C-Class. That's what everyone won. And that's, that's a great prize in the 90s, uh, over $100,000 in value. Well, now the car is gone and you still get $60,000. Well, the value of $60,000 in 2019 was 33,000. So you, you basically lost 70% of the value of winning a gold medal over the 20 years and no one has said a word about it. Um, so this is, here lies the problem where every other sports um, salary cap and everything else has gone up, gone up, gone up, gone up, gone up, where track and fields has gone down, 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 um, or stayed the same. And I think these are the things that we have to address um, as, as not only as athletes, but as um, officials and why is that accepted? Uh, you know, so, so there, there's so many issues, and, but it comes back to the same thing. There's no incentive to do it because the, if you're in charge, your job is to make sure you make people happy. So you're not complaining when you give $500,000 to a federation and they spend $300,000 on themselves and they bring 20 athletes to the world championships. You're not going to complain because you want their, they want their vote. So, so that's really what it's about. If you have to eliminate the, the, the corrupt system in order to make it better. I'm clapping on that one. <laughs> um. I mean, I, I try not to get too too involved in that IWF stuff because it just doesn't make much uh, much sense to me. Um, you know, I mean, Carl mentioned a a, a, a good point, um, and I'm at risk of uh, well, I guess I, nobody can do anything to me now. There must be a statue. I probably made more money in college now than some of these guys who think they're professionals. You know, so um, that it, it just it, it just. You used to go to a meet and you knew you were going to earn some money because you got paid to show up. Now you go to go to meets, you go to five meets and you come back and you owe somebody some money. <laughs> so, and I mean, it happens time and time again. Um, and, you know, I, I just, and there, there aren't nearly as many meets as, as, uh, uh, as there used to be. Everything looks the same. You go, you go to a meet and everybody wears the same uniform. You're like, who's that dude? You know, I, I, I want to, I went to Lausanne a couple of years ago, and um, and I walked into the uh, into the you know I walked into the stadium and you know and and I'm I'm like wow everything it, it it's great and they had a decent crowd and everything but there was nobody nothing stood out there was nothing that made me like you know that made me think wow this feels like it used to feel it fe it feels like a hollowed out version of itself. Uh, uh, some of these, some of these meets, and I, I just don't, I don't quite understand. Like, there are a couple of really interesting athletes, and there's a lot of talent, but it, it's just not. And I'm not, maybe it's because I'm, I'm, I, I was competing, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem like there's, there, are, there's a, there's very much excitement now. Um, probably one of the most exciting guys is, 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 uh, is Grant. You know, Grant. Has has enough personality that he can kind of carry a carry a room and and, and carry a meet, um, you know. But there really aren't that many people out there that can do it uh, nowadays. And, and yeah, and, and then, you know, there's no the rivalries don't even seem the same. You know, it just well, uh, we we also have to make sure that we want to present our product the absolute best possible way. Um, and that's one thing I will say about Doha. It was beautiful. I mean, mm -hmm. the oh. setups were nice. The stadiums look nice. And even though they don't fill them anymore, they covered that up with sponsorship. So I, I thought they did a, a, a fabulous presentation. And, and when they, they turned down the lights and, and, and flashed their name on, I mean, that's what we have to try to do all the time. We have to look at presentation. How do we mm -hmm. look on television? And, and you know, years and years ago, we, we talked about our uniforms earlier. But one of the reasons we had uniforms because we didn't like the uniforms they were making. So we made our own. 
And, and we wanted to make sure that we looked a certain way. I mean, the Santa Monica color, the blue color came from the fact that it looked good on camera. You know, we used to, back when I started, it was, it was navy blue and white, white, t white shirts and navy blue shorts. And I'm like, that doesn't stand out. So we went to that aqua blue and orange, and all of a sudden that stood out, even in a black and white newspaper. So we have to think about every aspect of it. If you go to all professional sports, everything looks good. Um, and they're clear. And then something else, and I know all of you understand. I can walk right down right now and knock on the door at the, at the, um, the Toyota Center in Houston on the night of a Rockets game, and probably in 10 minutes, I'm sitting in the stadium. But if I go to a track meet, then, or a USA meet, it's a, it takes an act of Congress to get a credential. So I, I don't understand that. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we don't, you know, so we don't, even even look at that. We should have the wonderful people there all the time. We should we should um, uh, bring in Leroy and Evelyn Ashford and and all these people. I want to know what her life's like. You mentioned Larry Myers earlier. Larry Myers. These people should be there. You're talking about someone who jumped 28, eight and three quarters. I mean, he's what, fourth or fifth of all time. But you never see him. He's never invited. So there's so many layers of things, and 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 there's so so many ways to uh, copycat what everyone else is doing. We're in, a, we're in a visual medium now. And so we don't even care how we, how we present and how it looks. And it's just a track meet. And then we say, well, it's glad to be on TV. Well, it's, it's, that's not enough. And so I, I, there's so many layers of things that we can do. And, and like Leroy said, you know, Grant has a great story. He, he's honest. And, um, and another thing too, I hope, I think helped was that he stayed in school three years. I mean, you're mm -hmm. in college. You're getting a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. You're getting you're on television more in college more. right now, mm -hmm. especially during the season, mm -hmm. than you are at post collegiate. So mm -hmm. here's another thing: how do you cultivate the brand and, and think about how you want to be presented and how people are going to care about you? That's mm -hmm. these are all the important things they have to start thinking about earlier now, um, mm -hmm. and hope that with the federation level, figure it out because right now it's just scary. We like Leroy mm -hmm. said, more than sixty percent of the meets that were around when we were here are gone. Most of the tracks in the stadiums are not even there any longer, mm -hmm. and right. um, and so the World Championships <clears throat> is is you know the the, the, the standard is twenty thousand, and it used to be sixty thousand. So these are things that we need to deal with the honesty of it, and and then I think we can attack it in a better way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and I think you know, we, there there are layers to this because I think we also got some issues at the at the uh, collegiate level. You know that we. We, we have to, I, I think, I think we saw the con, we, we, we see the contrast uh, the past couple of weeks with, you know, the investment and the marketing and the um, strategy, uh, the marketing strategy that the NCAA uh, put into the men's tournament. And then the contrast that with the, with the women's tournament. Well, what about, uh, you know, our, our, our event, you know, our event is basically, you know, let's just throw it to Oregon because you know people are going to come. That's that, that's the rationale for going to to Eugene. You know, yeah. they get a crowd. Well, you know, there there are really great pockets of uh, of of uh, uh, support for track and field all over the country, but we completely ignore those those people. You know, because of I guess the influence and the I guess the really more nothing more than I think the influence that that comes with uh, the, the folks up in Eugene but in the meantime that that basically you know holding holding our the sport you know in programs by the ankles and basically shaking them down for for the cash you know because that's basically what it amounts to um now that was really one gosh I'm, I'm no, I really don't want to go there you know we just have to you know yes. um and then when and then then they'll say, okay, well, we'll give it a shot somewhere else, and they'll do it for a year, and it's not really well well marketed and and, and uh, not not planned. It's not turned into an event like other sporting events are, and they say, oh, it wasn't as good. You know? But really, I mean, Mike, I'm sure you'll you'll say one of, I mean, as far as the the performance is concerned, you know, that mean Austin two years ago was incredible, you know, and, and but people thought, well, you know, it was pretty good, uh, but we need to go back to Oregon, you know. Yeah, now I know they've made a tremendous investment, and I know Nike has a lot to do with it. And I'm sure I'm going to get you know, sure somebody from Nike may call me in a couple of days. But <laughs> but I I just think you know we 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 we're I think we lose sight of we we don't do a good enough job of building the things that are good 
you know, I mean, you know, Carl, I'm sure you guys are, I'm, we're big pen relays guys, I mean, because it's good, you know, it's a pain in the ass, but it's good, you know, and we don't, and we don't, uh, a lot of people have abandoned that, you know, and it's good for different reasons, maybe than it was a couple of years ago, but damn, how often do you get to run in front of 40,000 people, you know, in this country, you know, and the past couple of years, it's been that way, uh, and you know, it's the Jamaican thing, and I don't know the USA versus the world thing. But the kids, you know, at least our kids lead that thing, thinking, "Holy cow, this is unbelievable!" You know, and you just don't get that very often. You know, I don't know. We we got there. There's certainly got to be. We got. I think we need to to really, really, uh, uh, really, really work on in, enhancing the things that are good and making it more available to everyone. I'm not saying everyone making it a, making it available to more people, I should say, you know, and uh, and give other parts of the country the opportunity more than just a year to say, hey, you know, we we can make this event a nice event. Yeah, that's it, Mr. <laughs> Clyde. It seems like you want to say something, Clyde. <laughs> oh, listen, we we have our guests on for I a reason. Real. No, we have our guests on for a reason. And can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can. can hear you, frozen. but you froze. Okay. Am you I like still this? <laughs> and I don't know how you froze, but that froze. Okay. That's, right. That's good. Really though. It's good. We should take that's a, a good, picture of it. No, I know that's a good freeze. <laughs> Am I still frozen? Yeah. yeah. Yes, but we can hear you. Cool. Okay, okay. There you go. Okay. No, that, that, no, 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 that, that froze pose was good. Yeah, it was no, like. I'm talking about. It was, it was just like intellectual. <laughs> it, it was just. Okay. It was good. Okay. It happens sometimes. Uh, listen, like I, I, don't, stop. Okay, so. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with anything that, that Leroy is talking about as far as, you know, op more opportunities across the country. Well, what I, I'm, I'm sorry, like, I should, should probably, opportunities for people to see us when it's really good. You know? No, yeah, yeah, no, I'm with That's that. That's what I mean. I'm, okay. I'm totally with that. I'm, I'm just like, these other areas need to do something to earn it because when it's moved around it isn't the same the presentation offered is not the same mm -hmm. and everybody likes to focus on the absolute fantastic performances on the track from 2019 and they were phenomenal but the fact of the matter is more records were broken the year before in 2018 in eugene and the presentation the things that no one got to see on tv the behind the scenes stuff was lackluster Mm -hmm. They did not no, roll out the red carpet for those kids. They absolutely did not. No, no doubt about it. But see, but, the but, thing, but, 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 point is that they're not giving the chance to because they're giving it for a year. Oregon has the chance to. Don't do, give me that. Oregon has the chance to. They have it every freaking year. So okay. they've got it in 19 and 20 and 21 and 22 and 24 and 25. So they can plan year to year. So Texas, okay, Texas, oh, here, you can have it in 23. So there's, they're not going to be able to put all that into it because it's not there every year. It's a yeah. it's an annual, almost annual thing in Eugene. But wait a minute, but sir, wait a minute. No, forget But it. sir, nothing. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Sir Lucius, mm -hmm. you all roll out red carpets better at the Florida Relays than Austin did at the NCAA Championship. Just, stop it. No, that is absolutely <laughs> true. That is absolutely true. Okay, so yeah. I don't, that sounds like a bad excuse to me. You knew the meet was coming. Okay, for, okay. first of all. The prep work, so I, do the prep work and roll out the carpet for the kids because they didn't so, do it. Okay, well, all I'm gonna say to you is this, okay. Personally, I don't think that um, it's fair that we have to go out there every year Personally, I think, hey, hold on a second. I'll let you say what you had to say. Personally, I think that I agree that these other cities could do a better job, but I do. I think they would be do a better job if they were having more often. And I'm going to say this for the last time, as long as I got breath in my body. I could care less they hold in a parking lot in the middle of Cal's campus. We're going to show up and run. I'm done. I don't care <laughs> what it well, and, 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 but, <laughs> <laughs> I want to add to this. I want to add to this because I think this really speaks to really what the, the this my, what I'm going to say, I think speaks to the problem. Institutions bid for, for the event, right? So the University of Texas bid for that event, not the city of Austin, you know? Um, and and uh, the, if, if, it, if it goes, the indoor meet goes to College Station, then, then Texas A&M uh, bid for that. 
you know, not, not City College Station. You know, and that's where the problem, that's where the problem lies. The Convention Visitors Bureau or the Sports Authority in, in these cities is not hosting these events like they do uh, basketball events or even other sporting events. The institution pretty much is doing it. And they, then they go to that, to that, uh, that uh, CVB or Sports Authority and say, hey, can you get a little help? Can we get some volunteers? Can we get a little, you know, that's what, that's how it goes. And it's not like that in any other event. An event the size and magnitude, and I hope the importance uh, of the NCAA Track and Field Championship should garner more political and municipal support. And it doesn't. And to me, that speaks to the NCAA, not necessarily the institution, because the NCAA should demand more to give that event to certain events. They're just lazy. They're just lazy. And they're gonna go to the place where it's easiest to get to get the what their idea, what the event is done. And that just so happens that it's Eugene right now. But it could be other places. And, and also, I, other, I and, 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 Eugene, huh? Eugene guarantees the most money in the NCAA's pocket. Yeah, exactly. And, but even that is lazy because if the NCAA, if, the NCAA, that could be a signature event if they wanted it to be, but they haven't made the commitment to make it a signature event. They haven't put the emphasis on it to make it a signature event. It is not, there's no concern, at least in my mind, at the highest levels of the NCAA to make the track and field event a signature event. They just need to have it and get it over with because we're ready to go on vacation. And, and you know what's funny is like to, to jump right on the, on the back of that, Leroy, how about this? Because I know that at least half the tiles remember this. How good was, it, was the 88 Olympic trials in Indianapolis where the NCAA headquarters is, mm -hmm. right? If they actually wanted to really take ownership of the event, they would do something to Carroll Stadium, support it as the NCAA event and have the NCAA track meet in Indianapolis in the middle of the country where everybody could get to every year. And then you could actually sell it like you do the baseball tournament where it's the road to Omaha. Sell it like you do the softball tournament, right? It's the road mm -hmm. to Oklahoma City. I mean, think about it. Who's trying to go to Oklahoma City? Nobody, but all the softball community is because that's where the Mecca is, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it would literally be the easiest thing on the planet for the NCAA to do because they have all of the cachet and infrastructure of Indianapolis and USATF because USATF and the NCAA are both headquartered in Indianapolis. In Indianapolis. But, but Big League Chu is a coach at IUPUI and their track hasn't been addressed in more than a decade. Yeah. So, you're never, so, you're never, you should never, we should never be begging to go to the Midwest in June for championship. I mean, listen, <laughs> here's the thing, Clyde, look, look, you can say that all you, you but not okay, look, <laughs> again, you're, you're speaking from youth and ignorance. I'm telling you some mm -hmm. of the best NCAA meets and, and one of the best Olympic trials and one of the best U.S. championships were all held at Carroll Stadium in Indianapolis, No one's disagreeing with you on that. But sir, and, I, wait, but they I were full of tornadoes and floods. I mean, again, you, you, you're talking about you're talking about things you don't know. There are no, there haven't been a tornado in Indianapolis in eons. There haven't been floods in Indianapolis in eons. This ain't Kansas. You're talking about Iowa. not mm -hmm. Right. Not, right. Can't, can't and, Kansas. <laughs> and Kansas. Exactly. And Kansas. Exactly. You can't talk about it. So. And, 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 and so the, I, I think that that's the best that's the best point made. You know, NCA step up is right here in your backyard. Create the facility yeah. for everybody to come to. Yeah, you all agree because, I, because I, no. I've been to some very good NCA meets in in that in that state. And, 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 and I mean, I and all the things they can host. They can host a basketball tournament, right? So clearly, we yeah. got enough hotels and everything else to do this. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Bruce. Now you good? I'm disagreeing with you, brother. I just like that's just one of those things that has always irritated me is that that's lazy beyond laziness because literally they own the infrastructure of the town. You know, and, and Lou, I'm gonna tell you, man, you you said a lot of smart things to me over the years, but that like what you just said tonight spoke volumes. It's just lazy. 
let's just get it over with so we can go on vacation. Yep. Or or to the or to the baseball turn uh baseball uh yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Now let's go to the real, let's go to go. the real party, right? <laughs> yeah, let's exactly. Go to the real party. <laughs> Because they, hey, because they party in Omaha now. Exactly. God, I track <laughs> stuff. <Yeah. laughs> really? You almost see yeah. people do. It's it's this year. It's kind of funny because you know you can almost see the the twitch. <laughs> 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 that's that's what I. That's the feeling I get. You know, uh, and and uh, it, it's sad, but that and. And the, the really bad part of as as a as a division one track and field coach is you almost feel like you have to defend it with your student athletes, you know, mm-hmm. and or at least kind of shield them from it, you know, so that they'll at least you know stay motivated somehow to to be the best that they can be, despite you know all of the BS that I think all of us have to go through. Yeah, and actually, we've actually turned into, into a into a, a rallying cry. We're going to do it in spite of them. So, yes, that, that's kind of how we that's kind of how we, we we try to roll around here. And, and that's the way that's the way we are here. Like mm. you know, we don't complain about where the meat is, mm. wherever they put put it. We'll just show up and do our best, man. Mm. That's what's mm. what we get paid to do. And I agree with you. I think that if they would just take the time and the effort to market track and field a way to do some of the other sports it would become a happening it really would Mm -hmm. i mean no doubt what's what do we have five questions is that four or five that's five that was was five five. spoken like a true coach we lose count after three Okay. So, it's okay. <laughs> that means that means you have one more. Oh, how many? You get another rip. How many have we done? I don't know. Oh, you got one more. Yeah, I, I tell mine all the time. If you're not counting, I'm not counting. So right. Oh, that's Le- hilarious. Leroy, I, I I have a wild card question. Okay. Why didn't you long jump at all after college? After jumping 28 feet in college? I didn't jump 28 feet in college. <laughs> NCAA jumped, is your senior oh, year? I jumped 27, 27 uh, nine or something like that. No, it wasn't no, 28. Feet. It, was, it was 840, actually. No, that, my, my, actually, I think my PR is 841. Yeah, no, that's your win legal PR. Yeah, well, tell me, is there any other? But I'm saying, I'm you saying, jumped what, 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 <laughs> No, at, at, what, at altitude at BYU, no, I, like I, 850 or 852 or something like that? No, no, it wasn't. It was, it was, eight, it was uh, I think, 847 or something, something like that. Too um, damn far, too damn far not to be long jumping anymore. How about that? Well, <laughs> well actually, actually, this is what happened, Chris. <clears throat> uh, I think uh, my um, first year or so out, I decided to long jump at. Uh, we had a home meet uh, in Houston, and uh, so I decided to go. Go. I, I kind of get my long jump. You know, get back to my long jump uh, uh, kind of mode. And, and uh, we, we, so we had a meet, it was kind of, you know, most of the meets in Houston are pretty kind of local. So you'll only usually see Texas Southern, Rice, maybe Prairie View, Lamar, somebody in the area. Well, there was just, just, just this little freshman at Rice uh, by the name of Cream Street Thompson who happened to, to show up that day. And, uh, and uh, I think he, what he jumped that day, Carl, I, I think he might've jumped 26, eight or something like that. And, uh, and then, and it, and it started to hurt. Um, and I decided that the, the hundred just kind of had, you know, I, I did, I, it, it was just so much more advanced. I was so much ahead of, uh, of where I was in the long jump that I decided it wasn't worth it. And plus there was these other guys named like Carl and Larry and oh, Joe yeah. and, um, and then of course you throw cream in there and, you know, it, it just wasn't worth it. <laughs> I mean, you ain't gonna tell me. That's why I became a decathlete. Yeah, exactly. It, it wasn't. It wasn't worth it anymore. Yeah, it was. It was tough in those days for the long jumpers. Don't jump twenty eight feet. Stay home. Mm-hmm. You know, and now you got all these guys jump twenty five feet and think they did something. Oh my god. Oh my god. Let us let, let not get the man wound up on that on that tangent. Which one? Oh, that one right there. Okay. Yeah. Don't get him either. You know the one. Well, Carl's oh, in the middle of my about. screen. I'm talking about oh, yeah. Carl. Oh, okay. Don't, don't get me started. I know. <laughs> yeah. But, you know what? I'm like seriously. 
guys, come on here. I'm going to walk. I'm going to see that record broken in a, in a walker. Are you freaking kidding me? You know, come <laughs> on. It's, it's like 40 years and counting. Come on, guys, take me off the books. This mm. is time. Let's get it together. But it looks like some jumpers are coming around now. So we'll, we'll see. But, you know, the thing about, I think you mentioned a long jump. The, the, the real thing that I, that I noticed is, you know, first of all, I think most people discount how difficult the long jump is. Like, oh, you run down and jump. No, it isn't. If it was that easy, you wouldn't have five world record holders in the last 100 years. That, that's, that's it. You know, Jesse Owens, um, Turvanez, Turvanezian, uh, Ralph Boston, Bob Beeman, uh, Mike Powell. That's it in the last 100 years. Oh, I didn't even mention so, Mike. Uh, right. you know, so, so you're telling me it's easy, but no one can do it. <laughs> you know? So I, I think that's it. And then, then we, we're in a culture now, and I know all of you understand, Thing is how people just they accept the prize, lack of excellence. Uh, you know, I watch, I watch the jumping and even little things that I'm like, you're landing, you guys are falling in the pit, try to get the extra distance. Um, all these things that I'm looking at. And I just think that if we just uh, really articulated how difficult the long jump really is and they understood that and understood that you're running this long distance, trying to hit a board that's eight inches wide with wind blowing everywhere all the time, and they respected that, that I think it could get more attention. It's, it's a really, really, really difficult event to do. And so um, I think if, if people understand that again, and once someone starts jumping far consistently, then they'll start jumping far. Because when I came in and I started jumping 28, I was 19. So people looked around and said, well, he's younger than me, so I better start jumping. <laughs> you know? So and everyone started jumping. You know, and, and I think that I'm just wait, just hoping that that person or people come around. And then I know because the talent's there. Then I know everyone will step their game up. Agreed. Well, we will let you two uh, take a breath, enjoy your evenings, decompress from all of this. We've got you all hyped up on on role changes <laughs> and okay. stories. Okay. So 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 wait a minute. See, in 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 true Santa Monica terms, that means that now we're going to let you guys go so we can talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Actually, what I want to know is that, you know, I, I like D.L. Hughley's podcast because he has he has a different kind of drink in his hand. What are you drinking? I have oh, tea. Wow. That's now so that's funny. funny. So that's you funny. Have tea? I have tea. It's just tea. I'm an old lady. What, what do you have? I I have vodka and Red Bull. I don't know about the rest of them. Oh, you have a you have a okay, I'm not looking at you right now. Oh you oh oh you did it like that. Okay. That Red Bull had me up all night. But you know, when, when I was a few years younger, I would have been in it, but you know, now I'm just trying to stay in the game, keep in shape and everything. But I always want to know what, what, you know, what kind of thing people have on the side. <laughs> oh, you know, we, well, we're well, always I'm concerned. Drinking, I'm drinking green tea. Always <laughs> concerned about what's in Lamar's cup, trust me. <laughs> that, that is a running, that is a running thing on the show. Yes. What's in the cup? <laughs> what's in the cup? Mm hmm So... Best wishes to the two of you as you venture on into outdoor season. I mean, you all have give or take about eight to 10 weeks, eight, well, 10 weeks. That's eight weeks now. It yeah. was nine last week, right? Carl, can we talk about that? Seven. Right? seven. Hmm? I have six seven to, to conference. Seven to conference. Yeah. Seven okay. to conference. Mm -hmm. I mean, the season starts with the conference week, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, but that's yeah, a that's given good. for y'all. That's that. That's yeah, we a, found that out this year because we didn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, I didn't mean to get it. Leroy, I apologize. I didn't mean to get it. You just gave me that chance. No, no, no. You know, our, our administrators will avoid us right now. So, we, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we're, 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 we, we live through some interesting times uh, okay. through, uh, through this, these couple of weeks. Uh, there's all of this uh, fear. Oh, we can't do this. We can't do that. We can't do this. Can't do that. And then it's like, oh, dang, we could have done that. You know, but, you know, that's that's what we went through. So. Yeah. So, well, hopefully the basketball, hopefully the basketball team is bringing y'all a little bit more money. I mean, they made the final four. That's got to help a little bit, right? I don't know if it's some money. It's, 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 it's you know, to me. To me, COVID is, was was more of a will thing. You know, I, you know like I, I said, agree. you know, the, like I said, you know, people. It, it, it used to be that oh, you know, this year you saw that they couldn't hide. Some people had a difficult time hiding that they weren't, you know what they cared about and what mm -hmm. they don't care about. Correct. You know, in the past you could you could hide it. You know, okay, yeah, we're gonna go with that. 
this year, like I said, you know, the reaction, hey, you get that little. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but I love you know, it. I love we it. just kind of, we, where's, the, now, now, where, what do you guys, uh, brought, I mean, do you publicize that this is going to be on? <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Look, it won't get to them. Surely it won't. You'll be all right. They're too lazy <laughs> to see it anyways. They're too lazy. Yeah, yeah. I'm the, well, I'm, you just tell, tell, tell me where to link it and I'll get it to them. You know me. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm the rock <laughs> about it. Well, we'll definitely set, we'll we'll, send you the link. deliver it. Yeah, that's why they have so many respect there, like Leroy, because I, so I can act like I really want to. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't want to be called to the office anymore. Uh, well, we, well, we definitely, we, we definitely reserve the right to have you two back on the show. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. We, we, we would love to return. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it was fun. So um, don't wait. Don't wait another year. Uh, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> we won't. We promise. We, we Always won't. a pleasure, guys. Always. Right, gentlemen, have a great night. We'll talk to you All soon. Right. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Final four. Thanks, town. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All, right. All right. See you guys. See you guys. Got it. All right. Well, that was. Well, that, that was, was fun. If that wasn't an anniversary party, I don't know what was. To say. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's get back into some of our uh, our traditional spots, and let's address track is back. So now we, we've got uh, outdoor edition. Yeah, Super yeah, outdoor yeah. edition. So, so can can we just take a moment to to appreciate the the hilarious comedic ironic timing of of the track gods, because we got in here a week ago and did way too early predictions. And some of us <laughs> accidentally right. put our foot in our mouths and then a week later, national records are getting broke. And, you know, so it's like, I guess that was gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel pretty good right now. <laughs> why, should, why do you feel pretty good? Because the storyline, two of the storylines I talked about have already, look, okay, clearly Tara Davis, her battle with seven meters is over. <laughs> Right, and I think I said that the crew at A and T was going to go after the four by four record, and they opened the season in three dead. I think we're okay. Oh, that's, my prediction. That's an interesting. That's an interesting dance you're doing there. I'm gonna let you. That's not a dance. It. It's an interesting dance you're doing there. I don't know if the rest of the panel agrees with me, but I I feel like what I heard last week was doubt if Terry no. Davis could take down Jackie's record. No doubt at all. Doubt. I said that was what I wanted to see the most was the battle between her and seven meters. Okay. But well, I'm talking about the record though. Because there you could jump seven meters and not get the record. No, the record was 699. True. My bad. My bad. You're right. <laughs> anyway, yes. Track is back. <laughs> so that the most impressive, I want to hear your was voice. the most impressive thing from the weekend? Was the was the 714 the the highlight of the weekend. I mean, it kind of okay. So I guess I'll go first. I, from a record standpoint, obviously, right? I mean, it's it, it was whose record was it? Jackie's. How old was it? Thirty something years old, right? Like all those things are wonderful. Um, but but I think there were other things that happened this weekend that were. Raise your hand if you saw Terrence Laird run in nineteen eighty one first beat out. I mean, that's the one for me. Like, I thought Tara Davis would break the record. I had no doubt she could jump seven meters plus. So as amazing as that was, I wasn't shocked by it given what she did indoors. 1981, as an opener, we are all looking at the phones like, what in the hell is going on? Well, see, if you saw the meet, if you saw the four by one, you knew it was coming. Because right. the four by one leg was more impressive than 1981, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. I mean, five more meters, and he was going to end that one early. <laughs> you know. So, and, and, the, and, you know, that four by one, it's funny because, you know, social media blew up a, a, a and T's three flat, and obviously Tyra Davis's uh, 714. But the really untalked about was the fact that three of the same, three of those four dudes on a and team got together on a four by one and ran 38-8 and got fourth. Yeah. 
right? And the NCAA favored the four by one hasn't run yet. I'm just saying, like the four by one is going to be on. It's always on fire, right? But this year seems different. Like this year seems like. Well, you know, listen, God knows what how fast people are going to run. Well, listen, there, there's plenty of examples of this across various events, high school, collegiate, professionally. And, and when this goes down this way, I for the next 10 years, I'm going to continue to credit this moment to this. 38 flat was the number that everybody was like, can it be done? Can it be done? Most people didn't think it could be done. Then Florida goes and does it. 37, 37-9. Uh, you ask the coach, the coach has, you know, video evidence that says it should have been faster than that. But once that barrier was gone, everybody yeah. knows you can do it. Everybody's chasing a new standard now because 37 isn't taboo anymore. Just like if the LSU girls from a couple of years ago would have gotten that 41.9 number. It went 42.0, but that 41.9 is different. I think once you pop one of those barriers, people start to look at it differently. I mean, Florida State ran 38-0 and lost. Yes. So yes, 38-0 they ain't fast. And <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, I, I think that's what it's about. And then you, you take a look at, you know, the LSU has their second girl run 12-8 in the hurdles. No, the, the first girl run 75, the other one's 84 or something like that. Right. You know, uh, you know. I thought Arkansas's four by four on the women's side would they run three twenty six, yeah, without two of their better girls. Mm-hmm. Just you know, Mister Lightfoot was at it again. <laughs> it, it, it was just it was just one of those meets, man. Where every time you know I I have the opportunity to watch it, and everything that popped up on the screen was just like wow, you know, Damian Thomas. Oh sure, y'all want to want y'all pick who's going to be second outdoors? It's thirteen twenty two for you. Right, <laughs> they just pick an event, man. They just they would just roll, and and it, and it was really. I mean, there'd been there's been meets going on before this past weekend. It's and, and obviously because of COVID, none of the major big meets during the regular season are going to be nearly the size of the, that they have in the past. But Texas relays is always kind of like the opening weekend for regular season every year. At least it feels like that, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you've got these these monster meets that always come up. So it's Texas first, Florida Relays is on deck, you know, for the distance crew, Stanford Stanford is usually a, a big deal. That's on deck. And, and I'm interested to see with the meets being smaller because of COVID, is that going to more focus the competitions moving forward or make the make the meets less dynamic? The Texas meet seems that it's going it's going to ramp th things up a little bit, you know. I think what, I think what the what the new format do, did is just it just advanced when you'd see the individual performances because if Texas relays is a regular meet, Terrence probably is, is a, this regular itself is relay competition. Terrence probably doesn't even run the two hundred because he runs a four by two, you know. Um, so I think that's what you're going to find is now you'll see some if you look at the list, there's more early season performances in the individual events. Because there's not a big relay meets going on right now, mm -hmm. so I think that's what you saw in a lot of events. There. I mean, they, look, Bryce Deadman, forty four sixty two. Who saw that coming, right? And, yeah. and so it's like, and I agree. I think that you know you started a couple years indoors uh, uh, years ago when A uh, and M ran three hundred two, and then all of a sudden they ran three hundred one, and then USC said, okay, well then I'll see three hundred one isn't fast, so let's run three flat. Right. So it's like, you know, you just see this and then now it's just snowballs. And if you and if you look at what happened indoors in the 400s, you have to believe the outdoor form is going to be retarded. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. I mean, look, a and ran three flat in the first meet and they have a guy faster than two of their legs that hasn't run yet. And, 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 you know, listen, you know what's interesting about the three flat opener? That, that's obviously been a big social media buzz. And they, are, they obviously were missing a leg, so everybody assumes they're going to be faster. But unless they pick a relay meet and do what they mostly did here and rest to run the four by four, 
it's going to be really hard to do that because at the NCAA meet, they have all those guys are in real events for real points. And it's, and, and the, and the time frame is going to be shorter. So it's like, I think, you know, that's kind of what happened with, with the USC crew from a couple of years ago. Like they never they broke, finished. they broke the record at the meet though. Yes. But they never took a real shot rested during the season. So at the meet, you know, everybody did their individual performances and, and broke records, you know, in those and then came back to do the four by four. So as encouraging as the three flat opener is, like, how much faster do we really think that's going to get? See, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to go out on a limb and say somebody's going to run three flat and be third or fourth at the NCAA championship. Yes, sir. I, I concur I'm wholeheartedly. I'm with that. But is it going to be, is the winner going to be 258 though? See, that's the issue. I'm going to say this again. Somebody's going to run three flat and get fourth. And I'll go in further to say somebody's going to run 259 and get second or third and 258 is yeah. going to win it. Yes. Okay. So your, your big prediction is the record gets broken. Yes. By somebody. I'm okay. Yes. All right. I'm, I'm in, I'm in agreement at that. Okay. Because because there's just there's too many good quarter models out there, and see here here's here's the caveat that I don't think anybody was paying close attention to. LSU ran three hundred one and they did not run well. Right. They did. And, and, and so, Lair didn't run. Yeah. Now, see, Lair's not Lair's not going to run that. I don't well, know why everybody's talking about. It. He's well, not. Well, well here, it's it's an honest question, right? LSU is LSU. If you Look on paper, LSU is one of the three or four teams with the legitimate shot at the trophy, the big trophy. So you're telling me if we're all in Eugene, Oregon, and LSU's trophies on the line, Terrence Laird ain't going to step out there for one time? Oh, okay. I am telling you, He'll Terrence Laird is not going to be on the four by four. All right. And I'm telling you also that by the time we get to Eugene, if, they, if everybody stays healthy, they don't need Terrence Laird. <laughs> that that may or may be the case. I I find it as competitive as the indoor men's four by four was, and as in, in intriguing of, of a race as it was. We all agreed. We finally lost him. He agrees that you <laughs> froze again. We finally <laughs> lost him. <laughs> He's been teetering and teetering and teetering, and we finally lost him. 258, 259, 259, three flat. Like that would be, that would be cold blooded to see. But the COVID super rosters might deliver that. We have no idea what you said because you froze for about 10 seconds. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. What, what we got was 258, 259, 258. All right, all right. Okay. So what I said was, what I said was, like, we all agreed that indoors, the women were spectacular on the basis of time and performance when it comes to the four by four. But the indoor, it was a really competitive race. But the times weren't fast. So mm -hmm. it would be really interesting to see that indoor season translate into the greatest outdoor four by four season ever, which is what Lucius is predicting. 258, 259, 259, 30. If 30 gets you fourth, that's the best four by four outdoor season we've ever seen. The COVID super rosters might deliver that and that and we're all rooting for it, but that would be a hell of a turnaround from indoor. See, and I will say this to you. The, the, the meet this year in the four by four pales in comparison to the 2018 year, I guess it was. Right. But it was, I bet you it was just as good as most of the rest of them because 304 was four. So, so it wasn't, it was pretty fast. It just wasn't fast compared to that ridiculous three, um, 2018 season with 301 got you third. So. Right. You, you you remember times better than me, Lucius. But the the '93 group with Ohio State, Georgia Tech, Baylor, UCLA. Um, you, was UCLA in that group? Because I just I remember the anchor. Okay. Derek okay. Derek Mills, Chris Nellums. No, oh, that was um, Quincy Watts. That was USC, right? So, so those four didn't they all run really 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 fast? Yeah, like three like three flat was like third or fourth in that race as well. I think. See and see and again the caveat goes back to me is that again like the quarter itself is crazy and there's a team up in Athens Georgia that hasn't you know launched their their rocket jet they got two forty three splits just hanging around yeah right? so 
it's going to get interesting. Um, I truly believe that the four by four for the men will be one for the ages by the end of the year. I really believe that in my heart. The, the Georgia, the Georgia team sitting kind of reminds me of, of the Daryl Williamson, Jeremy Warner Baylor team. They had two 43s and you ain't really know what you was going to get from the other two. So it made it really intriguing any other time they stepped on the track, but you knew they had two killers what were they going to do? What kind of position were they going to be in? Yeah. So, so, and that's, I, again, I think, like I said, Antti's got a leg that's better than a couple of the guys they ran. Um, I, I think LSU is way better than people to give them credit for. If you, if you know Dennis Shaver, see, I'm just going to put it out there. If you pay attention, Tyler Terry, who was run like 44-9 or 45 flat for them, is clearly not in shape yet. He was the third leg on that relay. When he becomes his 44 second self, as ever 46 2 guy, they're 259 right now. So if they become 259, then they make A and T become 258. Oh, y'all see that? Y'all, y'all hear that audience? Originally it was a general, <laughs> you know, thing on time. Now he is actually given the winner. See how he slid that in there? Very good. Very good. I've been working on them. I've been working on them. You know, <laughs> that's that's my Bowerman pick, man. Those four dudes. <laughs> I, I just I just don't know how like when you watch a team run three flat the way they did, and you know knowing that you know uh, Coach Ross has had done a very good job of having them ready when it counts. Why would anybody think they couldn't run? You know, as one point one seconds faster. It's not like it's not really that far off. You're talking about 0.3 per man. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. Right. And and they have and they have another guy who's already that much faster than one of the guys. <laughs> It'll be interesting. It's gonna be a lot of fun. The the outdoor four by four is always fun. It doesn't matter the 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 makeup. The super rosters just make it you know, more fun for per leg. So you can see craziness on leg one, two, three, and four. But it, it's, you know, I've seen it at, you know, a couple of rosters run 301 or 302 that like you can't name the people on them because that's the way the four by four is. And, 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 and listen, you guys aren't, you know, you're not out here on the West Coast. Uh, <laughs> and no, nothing spectacular has happened yet. I think on purpose and by design, if you're at the meets, you kind of see what they're doing right now. Guys, the, the USC women are loaded. Like it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to see it on paper, but then you go to a meet and you realize like, oh, like they're all on the team at the same time. <laughs> like the USC women are ridiculously loaded. Like the COVID replay with that crew is nuts. I, it, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy to watch all year. And I know, I know they're going, I know they're heading east, you know, for, for, for the uh, Florida relay. So I, I, that's going to be a, a really good show. Yeah. I think next week's show is going to be fun to uh, recap the Florida relays. Oh, oh, listen, there's no doubt that, that, the that the, the scope of the weekend is, is in, is on Gainesville, Florida. That, that is the best meet <laughs> on the calendar this, this weekend by far. How fun would that be if we were able to go on on site, just do a live show? Mouse, we would just mic you up. I'm sorry, Sir Lucius, we, we would just <laughs> mic you up. Oh, now, How now, Chew, Chew, listen to me. Mic'd up Sir <laughs> Lucius is a great idea. Mic'd up Sir Lucius at the Florida Relays is a terrible idea. It's a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> it's a terrible idea. Maybe we'll, we'll just record it. We'll record it all and we'll take snippets. That's what we'll do. See, the deal is we got to get Chu to a Florida Relay so she'll understand how ridiculously bad of an idea it would be to mic up <laughs> Sir Lucius at Florida Relays. Now, it'd be because, wildly entertaining. It'd oh, be my best, God. It'd be the best thing ever, but no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my I God. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Right? That's all right. We so, do. We know some some Halo. random high school Halo. team coach somehow manages to sneak their way on the track to ask Sir Lucius two minutes before the high school four by one prelims. Can they get their team in the meet? 
<laughs> Definitely been standing there having a conversation with him when that happened. And I was like, who? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Anyhow. Well, um, for the sake of time, we will forego our what were they thinking and head straight into the rapid fire section. And We're coming for you, though, Kim Mulkey. We are coming for you. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Um, we'll, we'll put a pin in that one. I haven't said that in a while. We will put a pin in that one and revisit that next week. But uh, Mr. Lamar, 365, it is your time to step up, sir. Let's go. So this one's, it's going to be short and sweet, but I've, I've come up with some interesting ones for you to ponder on and, and try to give a kind of rapid response to. So Yes, ma'am. You get it out? You okay? <laughs> I'm good. Okay. Are, are, are right. we doing, so are we, are we changing our format for, for good now? So at the end, do I have to get one question from each of them or was that just a solutions thing? That was just a solutions thing. Okay. I just want to make sure. Cause you know, Unless I'm anybody not, so, has something super I'm not so honored. <laughs> Excuse me, thirst. Please stay in your lane. Yeah. I, I, I said, I was asking, I want to make sure what, I, what I'm prepared for. Put your blinker on. Come on, dude. I have a question. I'm not, Cl Clyde, are you with us? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you were frozen again for a second. I just want to make sure you're still there. I'm good. good. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yes. All right. Tacos, hard shell or soft shell? Soft shell. Final round of Jeopardy. All in on the 8,000? Are you betting $79.99? Um, all in. Good. Um, which would you prefer? Racing against Leroy or jumping against Carl? So I've done both. And I'm going to tell you that neither one of those things is remotely fun. Um, <laughs> what's worse is I've raced Leroy and Carl, which was awful. Um, I managed to get fourth. Uh, I had to pick one, which one's worse. Well, look, jumping against Carl is the worst because there literally is no chance of winning. <laughs> Um, you're at a baseball game. Are you, do you have seeds or peanuts? Seeds. In your experience of the Olympic venues that you've competed at or either coached at, which is your favorite? Um, my favorite venue that I ever competed at uh, is Ulava Stadium in Gothenburg, Sweden. Um, favorite venue I ever coached at was London. Got it. Starburst, do you eat the yellow ones? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which is your favorite then? <laughs> your uh, face. <laughs> it's like the pinkish purple one. I don't know the flavors. I just know the color. I, look, I grew up drinking red Kool-Aid. So, okay. <laughs> look at Sir Lucius. <laughs> see, because see, red's a color. Pinkish purple is not a color. But I don't know what color it is. What is that, fuchsia? Then say you don't know what color it is. Don't say pinkish purple. Because I mean, it's not I, I gave an pink. idea. You get an idea if you open no, it. No, I, I, I absolutely, if somebody says something is pinkish purple, I think that they need their glasses changed. Check. All right. I think uh, it's like maybe raspberry or something. In, in, defense, in defense of Sir Lucius, um, I know I know Lamar is a New Yorker, but he spent way too much time on the West Coast. And on the West Coast, you identify Starburst by color. <laughs> by color. Just okay, okay. But, then, but then give me a true color. Now he's right okay. about that. He's right about yeah. that. <laughs> but I don't know the color, so I'm going to say I guess it's purple. So, so it didn't say purplish, but pinkish. Okay, purple? it's purplish. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well done, well, sir. Last well question: done. Ralph Tresvant or Bobby Brown? <laughs> uh, Bobby Brown. Every little step I take. Okay, I'm glad you knew my follow-up question. Got it. All <laughs> right, you have surprised. I told you it was going to be short and sweet, but a little bit more intense. Did right? you just ask yeah. him that for real? I, I was I never, ever a Ralph Tresman fan. Ever. I mean, I'm waiting for the day when someone actually is, and you're like, 
okay. And then you question right. that person. So Look, I had to throw <laughs> it out there. <laughs> I got nothing. All right. Well, you have survived rapid fire, sir. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're welcome. All right. So as always, we will finish up the evening with our heartbeat props. Um, does anybody have the inkling to shout those out quickly? Or first, I'm sorry. Um, I'll, I'll go first. I'm not, I'm not afraid. Um, I'm, I'm going to give my heartbeat props uh, this week to one Mr. Stephen Robert Lemke. Uh, Steve has been here with me um, at UF from day, day one when they combined the programs. He, he was out here for a couple of years before that when the programs were separated. And from day one, Steve told me he was my guy and he, he shared my passion and shared my vision. And uh, he's been here for all the championships, all the second and third places <laughs> that we've shared. And um, he's, he's my bowling partner. Um, I know he's not going away, but I'm going to miss him because uh, he's, He's the guy I know I can walk in. We can have that serious conversation. He gets me when it comes to, you know, that that one or two little things that turns the corner for a season. You know, he gets me for that, for that one or two athletes that we need to get to to help us turn that corner. And more importantly, more than being an outstanding coach, he's a valued friend and a, a, basically a memory of my family. Steve, congratulations, my man. I um, hope you and Greta enjoy whatever you do and I hope your honeydew list is as long as your championship list my friend <laughs> well said that's awesome happy uh, retirement I'll I'll go I'll go next um you know it, it's we're, we're approaching uh the men's and women's final four and you know so wrapping up the college basketball season admittedly when we were doing our predictions I, I said I didn't watch very much regular season college basketball this year, but I got to say I am thoroughly enjoying how awfully wrong everybody was about the Pac-12. So for me, you know, my school isn't in it, but our little sister school, UCLA, is in it. And the Pac-12 has been absolutely brilliant in the men's tournament. Um, I believe at this moment, as we sit here, they are 12 and two with one of those losses coming at the hands of another Pac-12 school. They had three of the eight teams in the, in the elite eight. And, you know, college basketball is better when UCLA is relevant. So even though I picked Gonzaga and I want to be right about that, it, it's been fun watching the Pac-12 just prove everybody so bitterly utterly wrong about this tournament so props to to the Pac-12 basketball schools and and props to UCLA we never should have been an 11 seed and they're in the mix so I have a question for you sir how many how many Pac-12 teams did you predict to be in your final four I, I was wrong we listen I, I I I listened to the pundits and I was on the big 10 train I I was we we all got it wrong I'm, I've I been was in, hold on a yeah, second I, I did I never, I got three of the four teams, so I wasn't that wrong. So, all right. I was just curious. I mean, I just thought because you were on this rant that maybe you knew something. It's not a rant. I was giving props to our okay. conference. Okay. Students. I thought it wasn't a rant. I was just, it was, I was curious because you were so proudly. I thought maybe that you knew the Pac 12 was going to do this ahead of time. No, but, sir. No, okay. we, we said that last week. Like, no, <laughs> no. But, but seriously, like, everybody got this wrong. Everybody got this wrong. They they were calling the Pac-12 the worst of the Power Five conferences. Like, yeah, and I'll be I'll be honest with you now. I I didn't think they were going to do what they did, but I didn't think they were that bad. But and by the same token, I was not surprised at all that that other conference was terrible. I I told you. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the little ten is what they should be called from now on. Hmm. My God. Oh, I'm off that bandwagon. Trust and believe. <laughs> Listen, every single team in the Big Ten can make the tournament next year. I will not pick a Big Ten team to win. Uh, they are dead to me. He's not okay. Harvey props, sir. Harvey props. I'm sorry. I, I didn't go for that. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, it's okay. And I think you only have two of the final four, not three. Oh, so you can't count, huh? Okay. You picked Alabama. Okay, I also picked Houston, 
Baylor and Gonzaga. Okay. So, so I don't know I about stand, New York. I stand Ohio, corrected, sir. That's three. I stand corrected. I have two. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my two. So you go sit down. Come on with your heartbeat props and talk about something you know. I, okay. <laughs> okay, sir. Slow down over there. I'm um, slowing down for you. You're making these, these wild accusations. I can't count. Anyway, uh, yeah, okay. as, oh, anyway, heartbeat as the EP of this show, my heartbeat props are very <laughs> simple. They go out to our incredible fans who have been with us for, as my name says, 365 days. We have trudged through a pandemic, prayed for vaccines, fought about whether vaccines are gonna be good or bad for us, and all the while managed a track and field season and continue to do so. And uh, speaking for my colleagues, I, I am for sure proud to be the stewards over, over, over track and field as we've been dubbed by a couple of people. But uh, my heartbeat props without question go to our, our, what seems to be very loyal and very rabid fans based on how fast all of our phones blow up when 532 on Friday comes and the, and the episode's not up yet. Um, but look, we, we love you, keep us on point. Um, we have a lot more in store for you in year two, trust and believe. Um, none of us want to be mediocre at anything. So if you, if you like season one, season two is going to be better. Um, I will wrap us up with heartbeat props that go out to Mike Cunningham. Uh, he is, has been kind of, I will say the entertainment MC. And, and I don't think that's necessarily even the right phrase, but I can't think of a better one um, of getting information. And as we've, the, the term has been coined infotainment um, out there. So he, through Gil's connections, rebroadcasts our show here um, via podcast. Uh, he has his interviews that he does weekly through via, um, via Gil's connections with various coaches, highlighting various things. Um, but above and beyond that, as well as that, he is showing the humanity part of coaching, or of, of coaches, I should say. Um, if you haven't received a card from him, a personally written, handwritten card in the mail with a stamp on it, um, I'm pretty sure one's coming. Um, there's a lot of coaches out there, so the man has only one hand to write with. Give him time. Um, but I know myself and a few other people have, and that's something very unique, very genuine, and that's who Mr. Cunningham is. He is a very sincere, <clears throat> genuine, um, thoughtful, and just uh, gracious individual. And so, I mean, I knew him prior to pandemic just from ordering stuff occasionally, um, but was definitely able to interact with him more consistently and whatnot. And um, I just want to give him his praises because he's, he's doing a lot for the coaches on the, on the coaching side of, or on the, on the humanity side of coaching. So thank you, sir, for what you do and uh, keep on doing the good work on our, on your end, helping us. So. Big Mike, I want that starter kit, boss. I want that <laughs> starter kit. Isn't that crazy? That thing was. Oh, I want that thing. I, I, that's my new toy. I want one of those. I'm very interested to see how that one pans out. I like it though. I like it. Well, um, 52 weeks, 365 days, God knows how many hours. Um, we're in it. We're in it thick. So we appreciate all of you who continue to support us. And if anything else beyond support us, support yourselves in your knowledge, your base, and just like we said about the marks of the three uh, of the three minute four by four, not putting a limit to your potential of knowledge. And that's what you join us here for is to grow that knowledge and kind of have different thought processes. So with all that said, we bid you adieu. Have a great weekend. If you're traveling, be safe. If you're competing, jump far, jump high, run fast, throw far. And then other than that, we'll see you in another five to seven days, depending on when you watch it. Thanks everyone. Have a great night.
When the lights come on, the road just get to running. When the mics come on, the opponent smash the plumbing. Would you like it warm, hot, knife the butter? Truth pin them hard, knock them off, that we bottle. Tsunami, tie the wave to your puddle. Tough love, punch you in the arms, little brothers. Athletics double, I'll see if there's no others. Track the field's pace and appeal to go further. Hey, Wiley, Coyote, it's road runners. Feels like you know us, you've been with us the whole summer. If not for this quarantine, these four corners wouldn't be here, but we here, so start learning. You gotta earn your stripes, gotta get your scars. Show you how to fight, but show us who you are. You lack experience, but still you wanna talk. And who is that you talking to? Your circle's kinda small. Heads prevail when the backbone's strong. Gotta keep it coming, no, it won't last long. Pass or fail, then sell the sad song. And if you don't check yourself, then that's wrong. Just trying to give you the real that you asked for. So why you keep cutting us off to ask more? We put it in slow mo, but you fast forward. Athletics, devil, I'll see the task force.